1996 Chevy Express G1500 conversion van with a 5.7 liter engine and uh, multiple complaints with this one, multiple codes, customer has done a bunch of stuff already, plugs, wires, cap and rotor, um, he has messed around with the mass airflow, the terminals, tightened them up, um, done some other stuff with the oxygen sensor and he continues to get these codes. His main concern is he wants to pass emissions and we need to make this light go off and obviously we need to take care of all these trouble codes to make that happen. These are current trouble codes that are in this vehicle. The key is on. These are current codes. And one of the problems when you have multiple codes like this is where do you start? You know, it can be very, very overwhelming to attack a vehicle that has this many problems right from the get-go. And I think one of the things that I do is I will pick something in this data list that is easy to check and start with that one. These are all current. They're, they're reoccurring immediately. So I think one of the easiest ones in this list to start with is going to be the mass airflow sensor because it's right out in the open and we can start with that one. Um, so two things, we'll focus on the mass airflow and we're going to focus on the EGR pintle position circuit because these two I can look at with the key on engine off and I can go to scan data and at least get a little bit of direction on those two. These other ones, O2 signal, you have to run the car for those. Uh, the misfire, you have to run the car. Pressure control, that's in the transmission. I don't want to mess with that right now. But these two right here, I can certainly do. The mass airflow and the EGR pintle position, we can do right now as a guide first. Let's look at scan data on those two data PIDs. And then we're going to focus on the mass airflow for underhood pinpoint testing first. Okay, starting with the mass airflow, we're looking for our frequency reading. Unfortunately, this van does not offer that. Um, the only thing that they offer is the grams per second number. And this is our processed piece, our processed data based on the frequency. And you see we're at zero grams per second. I'm gonna start the vehicle. And you see with the engine running, our grams per second number never changed. This is a problem. Next thing we can do, is, is go to the EVP, that's our EGR valve position signal, take a look at what that looks like. And we have a reading of uh, minimum 0 0.08, maximum of 0 0.10, so don't let this min-max scale mess you up here. Um, basically, 0 0.1 of a volt on the EVP signal, engine idling, that is also incorrect, that shouldn't be at that number generally around a half a volt, between a half a volt and one volt with the valve closed, which at idle it would be. So we have really two places we can start. We can either start with a mass airflow or we can start with the EGR valve position signal. Um, again, we're starting with the mass airflow because it's easiest to get to. And uh, hopefully we find something that's in common to all of this going to the mass airflow next. Okay, starting at our mass airflow signal wire, which is yellow. We have our meter positive lead connected to the yellow signal wire of the mass airflow and the meter negative lead connected to a known good ground. This is a digital mass airflow sensor and uh, this should be producing a variable frequency signal. Ranges from about 2500 hertz at idle to about 10,000 hertz at wide open throttle. Uh, with the key on engine off, I think on this model we had around a 300 hertz spec. Um, so we're going to look at the meter next, see what we got. This is with the key on engine off. You see on the screen we have nothing. There is no frequency reading on this at all. So what we're going to do is get out of here, go to a voltage scale, and see if we can see any kind of oscillation on this signal. This should be, should be a 0 to 5 volt on off square wave. And what we see here is a voltage reading basically of about 1.3 volts. We have a little bit of fluctuation in that, but that looks nothing like what the signal should look like. Um, so if the signal's out of range on a sensor like this, the next two checks are gonna be the power and ground, and then we'll go back to this signal wire um, and play around with this a little bit more. Okay, we're moving on to the power feed next. 
You see we got 11.69 volts on that feed. Our battery's a little bit weak. It's been sitting for a while, the key's been on. But that's a good feed. Next thing we're gonna do, check the sensor ground. Go ahead and move your, move your T-pin over to the sensor ground. This is gonna be the black wire, which is the middle wire. The feed wire was pink. This ground wire, we wanna see less than 100 millivolts, less than 0.1 is the number we're looking for on this. We're not connected yet, so this 0.23 number is just interference from lighting everything else around us. Yeah, you're still not connected to that. Nice thing about using a scope and checking ground circuits is you can see stuff like this. There you go, 0.02. You see this is where we weren't connected and this is where we are. That is a good ground, nothing wrong with that. Okay, going back to the signal wire again. There's another check we need to do on that. So the signal wire, again, is yellow. Not to be confused with the yellow test lead that we're using, there actually is a yellow wire on the mass airflow sensor. And there's our mass airflow signal. Of course, it shouldn't look anything like that. It should be a square wave. <clears throat> Although a 10 second time base wouldn't be what you'd want to pick if you were looking at that square wave that's occurring 2,000 times per second. Um, but we're just using this because we're on the graphing multimeter already and this is, gonna, this is gonna help show where our problem's at. This is where circuit design is important. Section two in my book, which is switch inputs, deals with frequency generating devices too. Now we talk about mechanical switch inputs, electronic switch inputs, frequency generating devices, which is what this mass airflow is. It's important to know that this is a five volt pull down design circuit. And what that means is the computer sends five volts to the mass airflow sensor and the mass airflow pulls it to ground to make an on off high low square wave. So when you have low voltage like this, knowing circuit design, what we want to do next is we want to check the computer signal wire. This would be an integrity test. And it's as simple as unplugging the mass airflow right now with our T-pin still installed. Go ahead and do that. And this should jump to five volts when we do that. You can leave that connected. Yeah, leave that connected. Unplug the connector for the mass airflow. This should jump to five volts. And it did not. Our noise is gone. But this should be five volts and we're reading 1.4 volts. So right away, what this tells us is this is not a mass airflow problem. The issue with this mass airflow sensor is gonna point toward the computer now. Um, this should be five volts unplugged. It's at 1.4 volts. We either have a problem in the signal circuit or we have a problem at the computer itself. Now, what we're hoping for is to tie all of this together, and I believe where we go with this, you're gonna see that all of these are related to this problem. Our next step, we're gonna check this same signal wire at the computer and see what we have. If we have five volts at the computer and 1.4 at the sensor, that means we have a harness problem. If we have 1.4 at the computer and 1.4 at the sensor, we have a computer problem so that's where we're going next. Okay, not to jump the gun on you guys on this problem, but I wanna talk about this computer and where it's located. Uh, this computer's located right underneath the brake booster and uh, these were known for issues. What would happen is the, uh, uh, it's an aluminum housing with steel bolts that hold the two halves of the aluminum housing together. Uh, they would crack, the, the bolt would break and it would allow moisture into the engine computer. We're uh, suspecting that's what our problem is on this vehicle. We're gonna find out here in a minute. Just trying to get a shot here of this computer before we pull it out and, and do our measurements, which we have to do. We're gonna have to take it out of its housing. But you can see that, that we definitely have some corrosion issues. Now, externally doesn't necessarily mean we have a problem. These are known for it. Hoping to show you what, what uh, that condition is here in a minute. We're gonna pull this computer up, try to identify that mass airflow signal wire, unplug the connector, look for corrosion too. We'll see what we got. Okay, it's gonna be difficult to show the wiring check at the computer. We had to unplug all the connectors, get the computer out of there, so we could attempt to do the wiring checks. And what we found was we had to 
pretty much pry this one connector out and uh, I'm not sure if it's going to show up. Um, some of the pins kind of pulled out somewhat, but you can see some corrosion. There's some rust on this on this one pin right here. Very difficult to see without moving the prongs back. Um, I'll show you more of the connector in the computer. This one has some some corrosion to it too. Not too bad on the pin side, but the fact that we had to almost break that connector to get it out kind of proves where we're going. And uh, looking at the computer itself, we have some pretty bad, not as bad as I've seen though, um, crud on these on these pins. This is the connector I had to kind of pry it out. You see that one pin's got that white speck on it. Actually, a couple pins do. But here's what happens with these. Um, is the the bolts that hold these two aluminum housings together will break and and you see the thread sticking out right here on this side and you see that the head of the bolt is missing on this side and so what happens is this is going to open up right here and you get moisture that enters the board and uh so this is what it should look like you see the head of the bolt right here and threads on the other side not tough to see that one All right, take a look at that one, the head of the bolt here. And again, back to this side, that head of that bolt snapped off. You see the little gap in there. We're gonna open this up. I'm gonna show you how bad this board looks. There's really no reason to go any further. This is gonna end up needing a computer. Let's see if we can show you the damage a little bit better. All right, here's the inside of this board. This is confirmed exactly what we thought. You see all this corrosion inside of the board you know this is all just coming from inside of that all of this moisture intrusion all through this um, I've seen them a lot worse than this one is but certainly this one's pretty bad and this is gonna con this would would be the contributing factor to all of our trouble codes you know from the misfire to the mass airflow code to the transmission solenoid code to the O2 sensor codes. I mean, all of it. And which one was the corner where we had the broken bolt? That was where the broken bolt was, and that's where most, the most corrosion is on this board. That's just, that's just real bad. What I'm gonna try to do maybe is pull the other half of the circuit board up, see if we see the bottom side of it. But either way, this is confirmed. This is what happens with these. Again, the bolts break. Water gets into the board, causes all these problems. Common on this year van. I'm not sure what year range is, maybe 96 to 98. In that, in that year range, they had this problem until they modified it and fixed it. You won't see it on the, in the 2000s. I don't think I've ever seen this, but uh, common problem. Again, the key to this with the mass airflow and the direction we went was knowing the circuit design knowing it was a five volt pull down circuit is what put you in this direction. Um, I'm not even sure if the manufacturer flowchart has you check for five volts on the mass airflow with it unplugged, but certainly is a perspective you need to remember on these GMs. Again, that's section two in my book, switch inputs. This was a frequency generating device with a five volt pull down design circuit where we're missing that five volts. It was only reading 1.4 put us in the direction of this computer and you see what, what happened to it. Okay, this is the uh, inside of that piece. You see really, really bad moisture corrosion in this area right in here. I mean, it's pretty much everywhere. There's, there's just stuff, just chunks of, of corrosion, moisture inside of this board. Um, you know, really this thing just needs to be replaced. I'm sure you could probably send it out to somebody that have it, have it fixed. But uh, you know, definitely not something that we're gonna do. Um, this is a garage owner. Actually, this is a, uh, an, employee, an employee of one of the garages that I work for and we're just gonna give him the heads up on it. Tell him to replace his computer. And uh, you know, he also has a couple terminals on the connector itself that have some, some damage too. So he's gonna have to do something with that too. But uh, that's definitely confirmed. Moisture, intrusion, bolts break. You see what happens.
This is a 96 G 1500 conversion van Chevy. That's it.